whatever, I can't see anything here, but it's fine. Um, hello everyone, very, I'm very sorry for the delay. Uh, my name is Tanja Meyerhofer, I'm a postdoc at TU Wien uh, in Vienna, Austria, and I'm happy to be here today and tell you a little bit about our work on uh, modeling quantities in software models, which is a joint work with my colleague Manuel Wimmer from TU Wien and Antonio Vallesiu from the University of Malaga. Um, let's start out uh, with a little bit of motivation for this work. Um, so if we think of other engineering disciplines such as mechanical engineering or chemical engineering or electrical engineering, it's very natural for engineers in these domains to think about uncertainty of uh, data that they measure and the units uh, of, uh, of measured uh, values. So for instance, um, if you would, um, for instance in this domain, a machinist would estimate the length for, for a certain produced part to be lying with a certain probability within a certain range. Or you would have certificates that say that within a certain confidence level, um, a value lies within a certain range. Um, because it's that natural for these engineers and actually really important to express these properties, they, ca they have means for ex explicitly model them um, in their systems. So what you see here, for instance, is an example of the Modelica library where you see a lot of units. You can see here frequencies, um, you could see here uh, the starting time, um, the rotating bodies have defined rotation angles in radian and angular velocity defined in radian per seconds. Um, so you really have uh, units uh, expressed in their models. But they are not only represented in their models, but they are also taken into account when they, when they do model level simulation. So if you have a look at this uh, plot here, what you see here is the evolution of the uh, velocity of these rotating bodies over time. And you can even choose w in which uh, unit you want to have to display uh, the resulting values. If you have a look on the other side, on the software engineering domain, we have very limited support for expressing these properties, so for expressing uh, measurement uncertainty and for pre expressing units. And you basically have no support for considering such properties in model-based simulations. However, um, if we think of the domain of cyber-physical systems, there is actually the need to accurately represent properties of physical systems. And uncertainty in units are two of these properties that we have to represent and also take into account when we do model-level analysis. Um, one important application domain that I have in mind here is, for instance, uh, the Internet of Things, where one very important capability is to analyze a vast amount of sensor data, which is measured data, and there's some uncertainty in the measurement method, and there are units um, which the values we will be given in. Um, all right, um, so what uh, did we do to tackle this problem? Um, so in this work, we are uh, defining a type system for representing measurement uncertainty in units, which gives us a kernel representation for uh, these properties. And we are defining an algebra of operations that let us uh, perform computations uh, with such quantities. And we provide implementations for Java, OCL, and UML. Um, before we dive into the details, I would like to start out uh, with a couple of definitions of the, important, the, the terms that are important here. Um, so the first important uh, term to clarify is a quantity kind and or in dimension which is any observable property of any object that we can measure and quantify numerically. So a length, a mass, a time, a force, and so on. These are quantity kinds and dimensions, and that's what I mean when I use this term. Um, then a quantity is an observable property of a particular object. So it's the length or the mass or the speed of one particular object. And finally, a quantity value is the magnitude of a quantity which is expressed as a product of a number uh, and of a unit. So for instance, a quantity value would be the velocity of 3.5 meters per second. All right, so, um, so what we would like to do is to express units. Um, and in our work, uh, our work we have based on the SI system, so the International System of Units, which is standardized by NIST. And SI is defining seven base dimensions, uh, which are given here, length, mass, time, and so on. And they are associating base units to these. So they are assuming that if you use the uh, SI system, um, you're going to use these units um, for representing quantities of this kind. Um, furthermore, they define 90 derived dimen dimensions, so dimensions that you can derive from these base dimensions with associated units. So 
So for instance, a direct dimension is an area, and the unit is, a, is square meter, even in square meter. There are also other system of units, but what's important to note is that they're basically uni using the same dimensions, just the units vary a little bit, and we can actually convert easily between them. So what do we need uh, to represent uh, units? And as I was saying, our goal was to have a kernel representation for units. So basically, any unit can be directly derived uh, from a base unit, um, uh, in particular as a product of the base units with particular exponents. Um, and because we know the base units, uh, we can represent the unit just by the tuple of the exponents that we are using. So for instance, we can represent meter as this product here. We have here the, all the base units, and all the exponents are zero, except for the meter unit, which is the unit used for the length dimension. So we can represent meter as this um, tuple here. Um, I was saying that we um, have other systems of units where we are using other base units. And what we would actually be able, like to be able to do is to automatically convert between these units, right? Um, for doing that, we need uh, two more informations about the unit, uh, which are the conversion factors and the offsets. That's pretty obvious. And again, we can um, define them or represent them relative to the base unit. So we can again represent this as these uh, tuples where each value stands for uh, one of the base dimensions. So for instance, the conversion factor for going from kilometers to meters uh, would be this tuple where we have uh, all one values except for the length dimension where we have 1000 and all the offsets are zero. And here are some other examples given. Okay, so now we know what would be mm, in a yeah, what would be a current representation for that? Um, since we are working on software models, how would we um, uh, define that in a modeling language? For that, we could introduce, um, or we are introducing this type unit uh, with these uh, attributes. So we give it a name and a symbol for easier uh, for doing string outputs and things like that. We have the dimensions tuple, the conversion factor tuple, and the offset. And here you see concrete instances given in object diagram notations of the examples that we just have seen. Okay, so this is the part on units. Um, furthermore, we would like to be able to represent uncertainty because we are targeting uh, measured values or estimated values, and for them it's impossible to know them or to give a value with 100% precision. Um, and in particular, the, the value of, of a measured quantity is on always only complete if we uh, are accompanying with if with a statement about the uncertainty that is associated with it. Uh, and for representing this, we are, uh, uh, we are using the definition of standard uncertainty given in the GUM. The GUM is the guide to the expression of uncertainty in measurement. Um, and it defines the standard uncertainty of a measure x um, to be expressed as the standard deviation. And the GUM provides us um, uh, guidelines for uh, how to come to the standard deviation. You can see two examples here. Um, in the example, uh, in an example where we our measured values follow a normal distribution, we can take it as x the arithmetic mean and as a standard deviation the experimental deviation, which is usually um, referred to as sigma. If we have an interval, we have to assume uniform, uniform or rectangular distributions, and we take as x the midpoint of the interval and uh, as you the standard variance, which you can calculate with this formula. And there are other cases which are described in the GUM. But the important point here is that you can always express uncertainty with this x plus minus u, or we can also denote it with this tuple, um, where x is um, like the arithmetic mean or the uh, midpoint of an interval, and u uh, is the standard uncertainty. OK, again, a uh, uh, model or model level representation of that would be a class um, uncertain real, which has two real values, one for representing x and one for, for representing u. And having these two classes, we ba basically have everything together to represent quantities. So a quantity is a, has a unit. We saw the representation earlier. And it has an un associated uncertain real value. And now we can use this class to represent quantity values. And here we have a, a length of 10 plus minus 0 0.001 meter. So here we have this unit meter. We saw that beforehand. And here we have this 10 plus minus 0 0.001 um, value. 
All right, um, so let's consider a simple example. We also use this example in the paper. In this example, we have a track that is traversed by a car, and at certain points on this track, we are taking measurements. And in particular, we are taking measurements of the time, the position, and the velocity. Um, and now we can use this quantity type, uh, which means that uh, we can represent in instances the uncertainty of the used measurement method and the unit. So we can say whether the time was in given in, uh, time is maybe a bad example, so time, the time was given in seconds, positions was given miles or meters or whatsoever. So we can express that now. But what we, of course, also would like to be able is to do computations with these values, right? So we would like to, for instance, calculate the average velocity and the average acceleration of the car on a particular section, right? So we would like to um, to execute operations like these ones given here. And for enabling that, we have defined a set of operations for the types that we have introduced. Um, so for a unit, we have introduced operations uh, that allow us to query the nature of a unit. So for instance, to determine whether it's a base unit or not. Um, we have defined operations for comparing unit and for combining units. And just as an example, um, this is uh, a specification of the is compatible with unit, uh, which checks whether two units are compatible to be combined. Um, and in order to be combinable, they don't have to be necessarily completely the same unit, but they have to be of the same dimension, which we can check by uh, comparing the dimensions vectors. So if we have meters and miles, these, um, their uh, dimensions vectors will be the same. They will have the exponent one for the length dimension. Um, whereas when we have square meter, the exponent will be two, so they are not compatible with each other for being combined. Um, and uh, this operation uh, is also used when we do uh, operations with these units. So for instance, this multiply uh, units operation is always used when we multiply quantity values, because if we are multiplying the values, we also have to multiply the units, right? Um, and since the dimensions tuples are just representing the exponents, what we have to do is to add the single values of these tuples. So if we have meter, which is represented like this, we already know that from the previous example, this is the encoding of square meter, and if we now multiply a meter value with a meter value, we will add this tuple and get exactly the one which is representing square meter. Um, so just as an example. Um, then, of course, we also have defined operations on the U real type. Um, again, for doing it arithmetic operations and comparison operations. And if you want to learn more about that, I kindly refer you to an earlier publication by Antonio and his colleagues, um, which was represented at the Quatic uh, conference. Just as a note, um, uh, if we are uh, doing computations with uncertain values, we have to respect the propagation of uncertainties, so we have to aggregate the uncertainties, and there are different methods how we can do that. Um, so having these operations, we can of course define operations for the quantity type, um, for doing the same things basically, doing unit comparison, conversion, arithmetic operations, and comparisons, and they are using the operations that are defined for unit and for the uncertain real type. So as an example, if we are adding two quantity values, we first have to convert the summands to the same units, and then we call the add operation defined for uh, u real to take care of the aggregation of uncertainties. Okay, having that, we can actually do our, our calculations, and um, what's important to note is that, um, so for instance, we see here the aggregation of uncertainty. We have here in these two time values the same uncertainty, but if we calculate the duration, we get a higher uncertainty. And um, we automatically convert between different kinds of units. So here we have given a position in kilometers and here in meters, and the com conversion will happen automatically. Um, so this automatic conversion and uh, compatibility checking is done dynamically by the operations that we have defined. But of course, we would also like to be able to do that statically, right? So if we are defining the operations that we can statically check whether it's valid or not. And for doing this, actually the quantity type is an abstract class and we are defining subtypes for uh, all the different uh, quantity kinds of all the different dimensions. And we are also redefining the operations to allow only operations that actually make sense. So for instance, to a length, we can only add a length, nothing else, and we will get a length. 
um, for multiplication, we can multiply length with length and we'll get an area, and we can multiply length with an area and we'll get a volume, and, and operations like this, and with this we can actually do already static checks. Um, so in our example, we would actually use these subtypes um, and have a more explicit representation of the values and the units that we're going to expect here. Um, when it comes to the implementation, so we did a reference implementation for Java uh, to uh, experiment with the different conversions and arithmetic operations and so on. Um, we have an, Im an implementation for OCL. Um, so the OCL gives uh, specifications with pre- and post conditions. You saw some of the specifications on the slides. Um, but with the implementation is actually done with the use tool and in use we also have support for using operations imperatively. So actually we can instantiate quantity values and do actual uh, computations with them. And then we have, um, we have realized the type system and uh, the operations also for UML. Uh, which allows us for now uh, only to specify quantities and operations with quantities and for ex actually executing the operations we have implemented a proof of concept uh, prototype um, for uh, foundational UML that shows that this uh, can be done for the UML modeling language. Um, if you're interested in the details of the UML implementation I have prepared some slides and we can discuss them afterwards if you would like to. So there are some more slides on that. Um, Okay, um, I skip the summary and give you three points of interesting future work that we would like to do. Um, so what we definitely, what we are currently working on is to um, further uh, complete our implementations. We are especially interested in uh, this executable UML implementation. So to evolve this proof of concept implementation to a complete implementation to also uh, support the texture surface notation for executable UML. Um, yeah, so we are working on these implementations. Um, as a next step, we would also like to refine our conceptual model of quantity types. So for instance, we are not yet very explicit about the different kinds of uncertainty and the different kinds of units. Um, that's something we would like to do. And a very important issue are repre representational issues, like how can we efficiently or effectively represent quantity values, uncertain values, and these kind of things to the user. What UML is providing us with are these instance specifications, and that's not really a nice way um, to represent it. And as part of that, we would also want to um, integrate our proposal with existing standards like MARTA and uh, SysML, which are providing some means for representing uncertainty and quantities, but um, they differ from version to version. They are incompatible with each other and there is no means to uh, do calculations with such values. Okay, that's it from my side. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm looking forward to your questions.